Out of all the saucy witches' countless battles, these are the ones that trump all the others. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down the top 10 Bayonetta boss battles. Well, you were right about the shortcut, but I think they've sent a welcoming party. For more gaming videos, check out our new spin-off channel, Mojo Plays, for in-depth reviews, thoughtful video essays, detailed character origins, and insightful commentary. Mojo Plays. Game smarter. For this list, we're taking a look at each and every boss, tall and small, angel or demon, that our favorite Umbra Witch has gone up against in the first two games. Since this is Bayonetta we're talking about here, it should go without saying, but there is a big old mature content warning in effect. I'm sure you'll be more than hospitable to me this time around. Number 10, Gamora, Bayonetta 2. After five years of absence, this demon provides an amazing first boss for Bayonetta 2. The dragon-like demon served Bayonetta well throughout the first game, devouring many an angel. Unfortunately, like many other denizens of the Inferno, he has broken free of his restraints and is rebelling against Bayonetta 2. The battle shows off the new aerial combat that will appear throughout the game, as you must combat your once demon ally in a King Kong-esque fight. Thankfully, not all of her demons are rebellious, and Gamora meets the same end as the angels. Number 9, Alrone, Bayonetta 2. Bayonetta doesn't usually need a reason to start a fight. Even small provocations can result in massive destruction. After Jean's soul is taken to Inferno, Bayonetta takes the fight to the fiery underworld itself, taking on Alrone, who happens to have a personal vendetta against Bayonetta's confidant, Madama Butterfly. The plant-wielding demon goes through two major phases, fighting her in her more humanoid form before taking Jean's soul to boost her more feral, beast-like form. Of course, if you have to use an Umbra Witch soul to fight Bayonetta, you clearly aren't powerful enough, come on. Then it's going to be a bloody coronation. Number 8, Balder, Bayonetta. To truly see, your eyes must be open to both light and dark. A holy man in title only, Father Balder is anything but a man of God. Seeking the resurrection of Jubileus and the destruction of man, this Lumen Sage possesses massive power, and could even be seen as a perfect final fight. Aside from Jean, Balder is the only other boss in the story to fight on equal grounds with Bayonetta. Possessing similar powers, the brawl makes a nod to the prologue fight, battling on falling debris as it moves through multiple phases, even playing ping pong with a laser firing satellite dish. Just when none of her demons seem to be of any aid, Bayonetta pulls out a secret weapon and delivers a kick-ass line with it. Don't f with the witch. Number seven, Sapientia, Bayonetta. <laughs> Boy, they just make angels out of any and all kinds, don't they? Taking place out on the ocean, Bayonetta shows off her… surfing skills? I mean, she really is a witch of all trades. Maneuvering around Sapientia, the surfing techniques actually provide even faster movement, quickening the pace of the battle. The fight itself mostly involves Bayonetta dodging incoming attacks. However, the scale of the battle and the fact that you drive this angel into the waiting maws of a spider demon makes it all the better. This all leads up to the creation of a sinkhole to ride down on and beat the angel into submission. Number 6, Father Rodan, Bayonetta. I gotta hand it to you. You sure let me have my fun. Our favorite gun merchant and bar owner Rodan is quite the powerhouse. And if you can save up almost 1 million halos, you can purchase a ticket to witness him in his original form. Not only as Father Rodan, he was previously an angel of Paradiso, and a powerful one at that. The fight has him send everything he's got at you, giving you barely a second to breathe, let alone land a hit. While there may not be any fancy climaxes, multiple phases, or environmental change-ups, this battle is worth saving up for, and it won't be your only opportunity to fight Rhodey. Number 5, Jean, Last Encounter, Bayonetta. Bayonetta, it is time that this is brought to an end. That you are brought to an end. You, you did it. Jean has taunted the amnesiac Bayonetta multiple times throughout the story, proving to be more powerful than her on multiple occasions. But now Bayonetta has regained most of her knowledge and power, 
making this last fight on more equal grounds. The battle against her is pretty epic as both witches display their full powers, matching demons, blows, and bullets. As missiles rain down upon the city, the two take the duel all over the place, to the sides of skyscrapers and even on top of missiles. With the city catching fire below, these two pay little mind to the sheer destruction their battle creates. Fear is still not gone from your eyes. Fear? Number 4. Glamour, Chapter 3, Bayonetta 2. <laughs> This breed of angel shows up multiple times in Bayonetta 2, but it is the boss battle in Chapter 3 that shines the brightest. Bayo once again puts her surfing skills to the test. Seriously, where did she even learn to do this? Anyway, this time riding outside and inside of a giant water spout as she chases the angel. While most of this section involves dodging debris, it is still nonetheless impressive, leading to the second phase, fighting against multiple glamours on the way to the gates of paradise. This will probably be the only time that Bayonetta gets this close to heaven though, because after that climax, we doubt she's going to get invited. Number 3, Acer, Bayonetta 2. Little one! Welcome to Fimbleventer. Another finale, another god to fight. This time, as the embodiment of chaos, Lopter has become complete, able to bend time and space to his will. Moving through several phases, the fight sees light and dark join forces to take him down, fighting between dimensions. Bending space to his command, Acer summons lasers, missiles, and even a space station to thwart Bayonetta, but to no avail. Of course, you'll have some pretty epic moments with Bayonetta too, from pole dancing on a satellite to summoning a Jubileus to kicking the god's soul right out of its body. Ah, oh, Bayonetta, you're always so extra. <laughs> Number 2, Masked Lumen, Bayonetta 2. I'm not a fan of getting wrapped up in domestic disputes. Trust me, little one, he's not my type. Heavily teased during the trailers, the Masked Lumen Sage proves to be one of the biggest and best fights not only in the sequel, but in the entire series. While each encounter proves to be a challenging endeavor, it's the first encounter that proves to be the most memorable. With the two possessing similar powers, the fight will have both of you practically dancing around one another while exchanging your blows. The fight escalates rapidly too, moving from the town to an eruption of a kaiju-like battle in the background, and ending with you gaining control over Madama Butterfly herself to take on an angel in fisticuffs. Before we unveil the baddest boss, here are a few honorable mentions. Number 1, Jubileus the Creator, Bayonetta. After facing off against an onslaught of angels, running halfway across the world, riding a missile to the holy city and fighting Baldur, Bayonetta must now go up against the biggest enemy of all, an actual god. Jubileus the creator, goddess of Paradiso, is brought back to life, but let's just say that Bayonetta is not the religious type. The fight takes place far back in the solar system, on a grand scale. While Jubileus may not be as physically involved, it's the sheer scope of the fight, and the fact that you're battling a frickin' goddess that sets the tone and makes for such a fantastic finale. Do you agree with our picks? Check